This might be my favorite card slide of all time. It's something super visual, not that difficult to get down. I've been doing it for 20 years, and today we are going to teach you it. Yo, 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 guys, what is going on? Alex Pandrea here. Welcome back to my channel, where I teach you magic tricks, tutorials on sleight of hand, and everything that you need to know to walk into a room and be the most interesting person in that room with your deck of cards. Now, whatever you might think of the word card tricks, there are certain ways to handle a deck of cards and make you seem like you know what you're doing. Like you're not just Uncle Joe doing another card trick at the family barbecue. You all know who I'm talking about. So it's very important that we know sleight of hand that makes us look professional, like we know what we're doing, and give them a reason to stop, take a second, and look down at what you have to offer. Now today we are talking about the top shot, and the top shot is a way to produce a card from seemingly the middle of the deck, boom, straight into your right hand. This is something that I think you should all have in your arsenal to make you stand out from the rest of the card tricks. Okay, here we go with the top shot. It looks like this. It's a very cool way to seemingly produce a card from the middle of the pack, uh, even though it does come from the top, hence the name Top Shot. This move was invented by the one and only Leonard Green, and it was first, I believe, found on his DVD, or rather videotape back in that day, of Green Magic Volume 1. And it was a very revolutionary sort of slight because it would come out face up rather than the other ones where you like produce a card and it comes out the same way that the deck is facing. This is great because in midair it flips around and you catch it in the other hand and it really does look like it comes out of the center so let's learn the technique behind it first how to do it and then some applications of what to do with it all right we're gonna start with the deck in dealer's grip position now you're gonna want to adjust it from this grip to the grip of the top shot which is this grip right here which the deck is held between the thumb and the first finger and that's all is being held on um, no other fingers are involved to hold the deck because this is what you're gonna need to get down first before you could get into the second position which is almost ready to shoot out the card alright so first position is here thumb first finger putting pressure and you want to be able to put enough pressure so that the whole deck stays and you can move it around and this is just going to take a little bit of time to get down sometimes you, even if the cards maybe are slippery or something so you want to get just used to holding the deck in this position like that all right now from here you're going to move into the secondary position where your pinky is going to come on the bottom right hand corner of the deck while you're looking at it and grip down and start pushing the deck into the palm of the hand okay now this is where a lot of people get this wrong the secondary position is important because if you're not going to get this right then the move is going to come out with the card just doing that okay so you're going to want to get this position down first all right before you shoot out the card a lot of people try to shoot it out from here or they just try to shoot it out from a regular dealer's grip position and that's not going to make the card fly out in a good manner first you're here when you're ready to get into that second position your pinky moves here and pushes down the deck and now you are in that second position of what you need to shoot out the card okay now here are the positioning of the fingers first finger is still on the top right hand corner gripping it thumb is still over here still gripping it so you have pressure right there and now the pinky is down on the bottom right hand corner with the bottom left hand corner of the pack pushed into the base of the thumb right here all right that's very important one two three and four all right this is going to be a sort of hard grip a very tight grip because if you're not going to get a tight grip on the deck then what's going to happen is when you do this cards might fall all right when you're ready to shoot other cards might fall um, so if you don't have a tight grip that's what's going to happen but with a tight grip only one card will come out okay now that you know that we could get ready to shoot out the card which is the hardest part of this whole thing because we are going to want to shoot out the card in a straight line and catch it so there's a lot of things going on at this point now the first thing that I want to mention about shooting out the card is that you really want uh, to start off with a wrist action as well that's going to help because you're gonna to want to build up your pinky strength in pulling down and shooting out and sometimes uh, that strength is not up especially if you're a beginner if you're especially doing this move for the first time you're not going to be used to 
pulling down and, and shooting out with just the pinky. So you're gonna need a little help with the hands, okay? So in the beginning, you're gonna wanna do one of these kind of motions as you shoot it out. And then throughout time, you're gonna minimize that action so you can hold that hand still and shoot it out, okay? So that's just one thing to keep in mind when doing this, all right? So again, here, here, push it down. That is how it should look. And now we're ready to shoot out the card. So Pinky is going to first pull down the card and release it from the thumb grip right there, okay? So now the top card is basically being held by the Pinky, but it's also being held by here, okay? This not so much, this is more to have control over the whole deck, but if I pull down, you'll notice that it's gonna come off at an angle. And as that happens, it's going to sort of flick off of the thumb. Yes, and you could feel it, so it's flicking off of the thumb, all right? Take that card, put it down on the table, and we're gonna do that again. And you're gonna do that throughout the whole deck. Just pull down so you get used to that first action, okay? And I suggest doing this throughout the deck, just so you could get used to having that hand in this position, pulling down, and getting it cleared from the thumb. And you're gonna get more power, and you're gonna get faster with it, and faster with it, just like this, okay? We're not trying to shoot it out just yet. All we're trying to do is just pull it down, okay? Almost like a Cardini change, where you're here, and you're in this position, and you pull down to do the change, right? So almost as if you're doing that, but you're doing it with the top card, and this is more put into the, the crotch of the, <laughs> I said crotch, more into the base of the thumb area. Here, here, and here, pull, pull, pull. Good, good, all right. So now that you have step number one done, step number two, pinky pushes it down. The pinky is going to pull down just like we did before, but at the same time in a continued motion, it's gonna keep pulling and then go out to the right and it's gonna shoot, the pinky's gonna shoot out like this, like a spasm, right? So what that's gonna do is if you have a good grip, remember this is all about the grip, you need a solid grip. If you have a good grip on that card, it's going to use the pressure from here to have that card shoot out and it's going to fly into this direction or wherever your pinky is pointing. Okay, so where the pinky points and it shoots it out, that's where the card is going to go, all right? So keep that in mind as well. Now in the beginning, what you're going to have is probably something like this and it's gonna fall. Okay, and you're gonna try to kick it out and it's going to fall. And that's okay because you're building up the pressure from the pinky, you're building everything up and it's working in your favor as long as the card comes out, all right? If the card comes out and falls just a little bit off the deck, then you know you're doing it good. If it's here and you can't get it cleared from the deck, then you know that you have to do it a little bit faster or a little bit harder, okay? Now, like I said before, what's going to help is having that hand go from the left to the right, helping that momentum and helping that card shoot out. Because in the beginning, like I said, it's just gonna do this, but if you have the hand moving from left to right, it will really help, especially in the beginning. All right, let's talk about now actually catching the card in the distance between the hand and the deck. Where if you practice enough, you could get a long distance shot between the deck and the hand. And I think it looks a little bit better because I see a lot of people do this. Maybe they're scared to have their hands come apart or maybe they're just not used to catching it because obviously it's easier when the hands are closer together and you could just do this and have a sort of support here with the hands. But I think the whole point of this is to really have your hands far apart and to get a nice big stretch with the hand uh, a distance between it. So the first thing we have to learn is how to actually catch the card. Now, this is harder than it seems to be honest because I had trouble catching it and I didn't understand why. And it's the timing of it, all right? Because a lot of the times what's gonna happen is you're gonna close your hand before you get the card. And let's see if I could do it. You're gonna close your hand and that's what's gonna happen, okay? So one tip that I have to start learning to catch it is that you're going to do this, do this, and when you shoot it, don't close your hand until the card sort of lands in your hand, okay? So from here, you're gonna do this, it's going to land, so in slow motion, the card is gonna shoot out, it's gonna flip over, it's going to land into the hand, and then you put pressure with the thumb and catch it. To start off, I would suggest doing it just straight into the hand and see how you feel with that, all right? So just kind of tilt your hand a little bit, so it has a little bit of an angle, and just sort of do that, okay? So that the card lands in the hand and try to get it to land in the hand. And then you'll get the timing down, so you'll see how far you're comfortable doing it, how far apart your hands should be, the timing, and then you can start closing the thumb. 
Okay, then you can start doing that, all right? So your hand wants to be wide open, have it land first and then catch it, all right? So I think that's really gonna help in catching the card, or not. So after you know how to catch the card and you're comfortable with that, then you can play around with the distance between the two hands and really explore what you're comfortable with because everybody's gonna have a different uh, sort of strength in their hand and a different speed of which the card comes shooting out of, right? So with that being said, you're gonna be comfortable with a certain distance. You might not be comfortable with a huge distance, but also you want to not do it over here, okay? So just play around and see what's best for you. For me personally, it's about there. Uh, and what I like to do is start off with the hands like this, close together and right before I do it I spread my hands out till they get to the distance that I'm comfortable with and then do it okay here and there here there boom and then boom okay uh, and that just brings up a good point because I just did it right there a lot of the times well not a lot of the times hopefully not a lot of the times you're going to do this and nothing's gonna happen and that has to do with either your pinky is doesn't have enough pressure on on the cards right and it's not sticky enough a lot of the times if it's cold out uh, then it's gonna be a hard time because your finger just slips off of it and you can't do it so sometimes you're gonna do this and nothing's gonna happen all right so just one thing to keep in mind just as an angle kind of thing is to keep Keep your hand here and then so when you do do this all right um, it's not gonna look like you tried to do something and nothing happened and, and it didn't work even though you could play that to your advantage by doing doing this it doesn't come out and you say give it a second and then it wait and then like that okay to play it off um, so with that being said go out practice this move first and come back to learn some applications all right, here we go with some applications of this card move and some tips and tricks of the top shot um, to use it in performances. The first thing that I like is to really make it look like it comes out of the center of the deck. And the way I'm gonna do that is by riffling down with the pinky, right? Once we get into the first position and the second position, before I get into the second position, which is here, I'm going to riffle. Remember, pressure is right here, so you're keeping the deck like that. You're gonna keep pressure here and the pinky is going to riffle the side, the bottom right hand side of the deck and it's going to sort of create that illusion that the card is coming out of the center of the pack, okay? So the way that we do this is here, here, and now you're ready for that second position which is there. So you're gonna go quickly from here to there and then shoot it out. And that's all gonna be done while you say, look, it's gonna come somewhere from the center. So you do this and then I do a motion left to get into the position and then right to shoot it right there okay so it's going to look like the card is somewhere in the center and then shoot it out all right so here boom and then shoot it out all right you're going to want to catch that too by the way so here watch the card and then shoot it out all right now one tip afterwards is to break the deck with the pinky again as if that's where it came from all right and that's a very very cool illusion because you're here you're here you point you do the move and then you break again and it really just looks like you shot it from there if you do it right and if you do the speed from this position to this position shoot it out and back to this position you're gonna have to obviously work on that but it should look like that all right and it could look really really good once you get it right all right the second thing i like to do with it is something called the simple shot and it looks like that. It's a production of the two top cards face up. Now I'm gonna leave a link either down below or right here, you can click there, uh, where I teach my version of Paul Harris's simple switch. Now I love that move a lot, and I came up with a way of doing it with the top shot where it's here and there, and you're, all you're doing with that is you're doing that instant replay move, okay? Like I said, click that link so you could learn it more in detail, but it's here, okay? and then it's the top shot at the same time and you're doing this, the card, doing the instant replay move, boom, like that, and at the same time your hand shoots it out and comes down and catches the top shot card at the same time. So it's here and it's there. So it's all about timing on this one. It's a very, very knacky move. So it's cool if you wanna produce two cards from the top of the deck. Let's say it's the two queens. If you wanna do a sandwich trick, you can start off by doing this. Like I'm gonna need one queen, two queens to start this effect, and then you go into your sandwich effect. Speaking of sandwich routines, here's a cool thing that you can do with the two queens. Show the two queens and then a card appears in the middle of the sandwich and it has a more structured sort of routine feel by the card being lost and then found in between the queens rather than just shot into your hand, okay? All right, last but not least, my favorite application to use this for is doing this making a card shoot out of the middle of the deck um, and really shoot out of the middle of the deck because it's a different color from the rest of the pack. 
Now the way to do this is using a double backer card. One side is the same color as the rest of the pack and the other side is an indifferent color. And we're gonna take advantage of the fact that the card comes out face up from the top of the pack and this reversal process is going to really make it look like that card shoots out of the center. So you have the card just like this with the green side down. You're gonna say look from the center one card comes out. You do that to create the illusion that it comes out of the center even more. Take this card now and what's really cool about this uh, is because it is a double backer you could get a break on the top card. Place this right here, do your double, show the card and now push off one single card because this is a double backer it'll clean up nicely and then turn that back to green or back to pink rather. Place it here, you're done, you only have to palm this card off and get rid of it and you could go into any other trick. So it's a quick little thing that you can do with a double backer and the top shot move. Now before we end this video, I wanna talk about something that I think is important, that any professional or enthusiast that wants to take your card magic to the next level has to think about. Now when you're doing card magic, it's very important, especially because we learned the slight like this, a very visual show-offy kind of slight, to not take your magic into the direction, at least this is my opinion, to not take your card magic in the direction of, hey, look at me, look what I can do. It's one thing to say, hey, look at me and do three top shots in a row four top shots and produce four aces, right? But it's another thing to use that in a bigger context, in a bigger routine, and mold everything that you're doing into sort of a routine that they can be interested in. It's very important to take a step back and look at it from the spectator's point of view. Why should they be interested in watching you? Why should they be interested in watching what you have to offer? So you have to make it personal to them. And that's all gonna be depending on what route you wanna go with your magic. Is it a a, hey look at me look what I can do sit back and then just sort of take the applause or is it more like come in here let's experience this together okay so something very important to keep in mind when doing moves like this or when incorporating moves like this into your card magic you can very easily get caught up in the moment and forget the reason why you're doing it so that's just one little note that I wanted to see when taking a look at moves like this like flicking a card in the air doing a one-hand shuffle doing any kind of flourish keep in mind this perspective from the spectator and ask yourself this one simple question. What can I offer the spectators besides having them watch me show off a little bit with a deck of cards? If you answer that, I think your card magic will be a lot better. If you guys found value in this video, do me a favor and hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. Leave your comments below and we'll see you very soon on the next video. Peace.